All right, so we're going to go ahead and continue on. For this week, tomorrow's lesson will be the last lesson of the whole year. Uh, for Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to go ahead and do study guides. So it's going to be 25 problems one day, 25 problems another day. Your whole final will, be, will consist of 50 problems. The final will be a good percentage of your grade. So make sure you actually study and do it diligently. Um, on Friday, I will have a video on how to do all of them step by step so I can show you how it can go and how to do it a little bit. Uh, make sure you take it seriously again it's your finals. Uh, you'll also have this whole week to work on your missing assignments. If you have any missing assignments so let's say you watch this video very late you watch it um, Tuesday or Wednesday because you found out that you can do it not, um, late. You can do these assignments late. So if you find out Wednesday you only have two days to do all of your missing assignments because Everything has to be turned in from this Friday, this Friday at 11.30 p.m. because I have to grade all of those missing assignments and have the grades turned in by the following week. So I'm not going to give you an extended next week to turn in all the assignments. It's too much work for me and for you too. So you're going to do as much as you can. If you need to know what you're missing, you have to email me. I will let you know. I will get in contact with some parents and let you know that some of you are missing quite a few assignments, um, like maybe five, ten, maybe like three weeks worth of work. There are some of you like that. Um, just, just let me know. All right, so we're going to talk about decompositions. We're going to talk about how to move everything. So we'll move this laptop. All right. So here, back to your decomposition. When we talk about decomposition, we think of decomposing. We're separating. Here, let's go ahead and look at example one. So we're going to de we're going to decomposite this vector here. If we look at this vector, we know that this is considered two, as in the x-axis. So we know that that's the x-axis of two. And we're just going to go ahead and separate it and create its own vertex, or create its own um, vector. So we do, we know that 2 is in the x, we're just going to have y being 0. Same thing here. We know that 3 is in the y, so we know 3 is the y-coordinate. And then for the x, we're just going to put 0, and we're decompositing by doing that. Example B. So we're going to be working with uh, magnitudes, and we're going to be working with finding the sides. So here, we have vector V. So this vector here has a 33 degree, so 33 degree, it's always at this corner here, it's always like a right angle here, um, and it has a magnitude of 7, remember the magnitude is this part, it's like um, Pythagorean theorem, it's not a hypotenuse. So here, we're going to go ahead and find what um, A and B, or the X and the Y is. So to find each one, we're going to use our trick functions. Again, make sure your calculator is all in degree mode, especially when you're doing the quiz, you need to make sure it's in degree mode. A lot of you are putting in radians mode. That's not what you're going to be doing for geometry. So let's say let's focus on vector v sub x. So that means we're trying to look for what this measurement here is. So we have a triangle. We have one given, and we only need one given and one angle to find it. So here we can use the cosine or sine. So according to this, we know that this side is adjacent to the angle. We know that 7 is the hypotenuse. So the um, trick function we can use is cosine. Remember, Sokotoa right down the side. So that means the cosine of 33 degrees is equal to adjacent V sub x over 7. And we're going to solve for what x is. I just have the V there because it's stating vector V. We're going to deal with later on dealing with three or more vectors. Now we have to get this by itself. We go ahead and multiply 7 to both sides. Do the cosine of 33 and then, like, do cosine of 33, press enter, and then multiply it by 7, and that can give you a more accurate answer. They have the absolute value symbol. They're just stating that's going to be positive. So now, when you multiply that out, you end up with about 3.63. We do the same thing with um, y. So now, according to 33 degrees, um, y is considered the opposite side, and 7 is the hypotenuse. So to find y, we have to use the sine. So the sine of 33 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's a v sub y over 7. And then we solve. Multiply by 7 to both sides to get the y by itself. And the y, so sine 33, you enter. And then multiply by 7. You end up with about 1.69. If you're off by 1 or 2 tenths, that's fine. If you're off by a couple digits, that's completely wrong. And now... We have this as x and this as y, so we found our sides there. So we're decompositing because now we have our magnitude, so it's the opposite of what we've done before. 
Now, so we're going to do a couple examples here. We're going to find x and y, but we're going to find it for different figures, and we're going to combine them. So the steps here, we're going to decompose it, just like what we did in step B, find um, x and y. We're going to add, because here, example 2 has two vectors. Example 3 has three vectors. So we're going to add all the x's, add all the y's. And then after that, we're going to create a whole new triangle with a whole new vector, and we're going to find the new magnitude and a new degree. So again, make sure you have these steps here. Um, screenshot it or write it down and have this next to you when you do your homework. Example two. So here we have two different vectors, V and W. We have the degree being 25. This means theta, just means the degree, the indicated degree. So here we have, um, for the first vector, the magnitude is four, that's the hypotenuse. And then we have the degree is 25. We have vector W, magnitude is 7, and the degree is 61. Here, what we're going to have to do is, according to the directions, let me read it all for you. It says, um, add the vectors by decomposition uh, and find the magnitude and angle, and the angle the resultant vector makes with the horizontal to the nearest one. So that means we're going to combine it. But first, we have to go ahead and find the x and the y of each one. So that's why I have the v and the w there. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and kind of separate this. Create a line. I'm going to go ahead and find x. To find x, according to this angle, it's adjacent in relation to 25 degrees. 4 is the hypotenuse. So I'm using cosine. So the cosine of 25 degrees is equal to adjacent, v sub x, over hypotenuse, which is 4. To get the x by itself, you're going to divide or multiply both sides by 4, cosine 25, enter, and then multiply by 4. You end up x being 3.63. Now we're going to do the same thing to find y. y is considered opposite side, so now that means I'm going to use sine. So now for the sine, again, same angle, is equal to v sub y divided by 4, multiply 4 on both sides. And now my y for my first vector will be 1.69. So x is 3.63, y is 1.69 of the first vector. Second one, same thing. So x is adjacent to 61 degrees, uh, y is opposite. So I'm going to find x first. That's a cosine. Cosine of 61 degrees now is... Um, adjacent side divided by 7, multiply both sides by 7 to get the w sub x by itself. So cosine 61 enter times 7 and you end up with 3.39 about there. Next one we're going to find y so it's cosine, sorry it's sine of 61 equal to opposite side. So Katoa sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And that is wy over 7. Get the y by itself. Multiply both sides by 7. And then w sub y is equal to 6.12. First step, we're going to decomposite. So we found x and y to each one. Second thing, we're going to add. So how we're adding is we're adding the x's together. We're adding the y's together. So v, y plus w, y. vx is 3.63. wx is 3.39. And when I add those two numbers together, my new vector, my new side, will be, if I have it here, 7.02. Now I'm adding both my y's, so I'm going to combine the two vectors. So when I combine v sub y is 1.69, W sub y is 6.12. When I add it together, I get 7.81. When I create a new vector, remember this is x. x is always horizontal line. y is considered the vertical line. This is considered the vertex. When I combine it and I create my new one, combining them, my x is now 7.02. My y, remember it's a, a vertical line, is 7.81. What they want us to find is our new vertical, or sorry, a new magnitude and our new degree. So now we combine it all together, we have this here. Now let's go ahead and find it. So to find the magnitude, the magnitude is just finding the hypotenuse, or the pet, using Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So that means 7.02 squared 
plus 7.81 squared is equal to the magnitude squared. That's easy to find. Be careful your decimals. I have 49.28 plus 60.99 is equal to m squared. To get the m completely by itself, square root both sides. So again, you have to add and then square root. So I'm just trying to speed this up. So when you add it together and you take the square root of that number, you end up with 10.5. When you add these two, you get about 110.27, and then you take the square root, just lining up. So now your new magnitude is 10.5. Now to find your new degree. To find your degree, you're always going to use tangent. So you're not gonna use anything else I know you have your side there, you can use actually any three, but I would just prefer if you use tangent. So the tangent of this angle, so remember tangent is opposite over adjacent. So katoa, opposite over adjacent. Opposite is this number, adjacent is that number. So tangent of that angle is equal to 7.81 divided by 7.02. You go ahead and simplify that. So the tangent theta if I divide those two numbers, I end up with about 1.1125. And now from this step, remember when you're always looking for um, angles, you always do the inverse um, upper, or inverse trig. So that means it's an inverse tangent, which is tangent to the negative one. So you're gonna do that to both sides. That's how you get rid of the tangent and get the theta by itself. That's the one when you do second, sine cosine tangent it's a little I don't know if it's blue letters right above the sine cosine tangent so when you do the inverse tangent of 1.1125 you get about 48 degrees again put your calculator in degree mode if you don't know how let me know in the email so that means your new answers your new magnitude is 10.5 and 48 degrees next one this is where it gets a little bit more tricky because of the degrees of each one so example three, they want us to do the same exact thing. We want to find the new magnitude and the new degree. But according to that, we have to go ahead and decompose each one of them. We have three vectors, so not two anymore. Each vector has a magnitude of five, or each vector has its own magnitude and degree. So according to this, this has a 34 degree, and it's a magnitude of five. So I'm going to make the small one over here, 34 degree. Magnitude, remember, it's a hypotenuse, so five. Here... They talk about uh, vector B has a magnitude of eight and makes a 90 degree angle clockwise. When you have a vector, remember, it's like an angle. It's like you're shining a, a flashlight. It's like a ray. So when you uh, flash a ray at 34 degrees, it's gonna create a small ray right there. So like that little triangle I just created. If you do 90 degrees, it's completely straight up. So when you're making something completely straight up, so you have a flashlight, you're flashing it straight up or just having like a line you have it going straight up, it's completely a straight line. So in this case here, so for my A, this is AX, AY, we don't have a BX. We don't have a straight line because it's shooting straight up at nine degrees, but we have a BY of being eight because the magnitude is H for B. C, we have a magnitude of three, so that's what I have up here. We're just trying to connect it all. And we have a degree of 60 degrees. So I just put it near each other so it can, so I know that to add it in the very end. So it's just, you're creating each of the triangles. In the very end though, your B is just a straight line. It's not actually a triangle. Now let's go ahead and find X and Y for each one. So if I were to erase this over here, so I can make more room, I'm gonna have, hopefully I can make this a little smaller. I'm gonna find X and Y for each one, excuse me, each vector. So now, remember it's the cosine, to find x, you're always using cosine. The first one here, the cosine of 34, is equal to um, adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So I have that there, multiplying both sides by five. So that means your x for vector a is equal to 4, 15. Find b, or find the y, it's the sine the sine of 34, so again, we're focusing on the first vector, A, is equal to a y divided by the hypotenuse, which is five, by both sides by five, and your a y now is equal to 2.8, they have 2.8, doesn't matter. B, 
Remember, for your x, you don't have a v of x, so v of x is equal to 0. You don't really have that. So now for v of y, remember it's a straight line, so the straight line is equal to 8. It's not a triangle, very easy to find. And then the last one, we're finding x and y, so we find x by using the cosine. So the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to, you see x, see y. You're going to find cx divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3. That's what a, or vector c is. We're focusing on that one up there. Multiply both sides by 3. So now your c of x is equal to 1.5. Now you're finding your y by using the sine. So cy is the over hypotenuse, which is 3. So you're going to go ahead and do it again. Multiply 3 to both sides. And when you multiply 3 to both sides, you get cy is equal to 2.6. Now, this is where it gets pretty easy. You add all the x's, you add all the y's. When you add all the x's, so if I were to rewrite this again, so ax plus bx plus cx. If I do that, I have 415 plus 0 plus 1.5. And when I add that all together, I end up with 5.65, just about there. So my new, um, my new vector, if I'm creating it, my x, remember it's a horizontal line, this is 5.65. And now I'm gonna add my y, a y plus b y plus c y. A y is 2.8, b y is eight, c y is 2.6. And when I add it all together, I end up with 2.6, and that's my vertical line here. Last step, we want to combine everything. We added it, now we have a whole new vector. Now we have to find the new magnitude and the new degree. So we do that by doing Pythagorean theorem. 5.65 squared plus 2.6 squared equals your magnitude squared. You square it before you add it. And then you have 31.92 plus 179.66 equals m squared. This cancels out because you're trying to get the m by itself. And from this point, you add and then you take the square root of it. And when you add and take the square root, I end up with about 14.54. So it's a lot of just small work that you have to do to solve for it. But your new magnitude is 14.54. Now to find your theta, you're using tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's 2.6 divided by 5.65. If I divide 2.6 divided by 5.65, I end up with 2.375. And then last part, take the inverse tangent to both sides. So then the inverse tangent of 2.375, so put in the calculator, Make sure it's in degree mode, you end up with 67 degrees. So you're going step by step to solve for it. The last part, I'm just trying to rush here. We have a word problem. They said that you can use it for life skills. Here it says a tent pole is placed at a 58 degree angle and is supported. Supporting a load of 15 pounds, what is your vertical and horizontal loads on the pole? So here you have it, you have the angle at an angle of 58 degrees. You have the pole carrying 50 pounds of weight, they want to know what the vertical and horizontal load is. So to do that, we use Sokotoa. So now we have to find x, and what we've been using to find x is the cosine. The cosine of the angle, which is 58, is adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply 15 to both sides. And our new x is about 7.95. Now we have to find our y. To find y, we use sine. Again, sine of 58 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. We get that. Multiply both sides by 15 to get the y by itself. And sine of 58 times 15 is 12.72. And that's it. All right, if you guys need more help, if you have any more questions, let me know on the Dropbox below.